Did you know that the things that you are using in your everyday environment, things that you're putting on your skin, like your lotions and your bath and beauty products, like your makeup or the cleaning products that you use in your house are all impacting your hormones. If you struggle with heavy bleeding or PMS symptoms or signs of estrogen dominance or breast tenderness or irritability, any of those things, I need you to listen up because things in your environment are making those worse. I wanna to talk to you about endocrine disrupting chemicals. Endocrine disrupting chemicals are natural or man-made chemicals that are going to impact how your endocrine system is working. It can either mimic, block, or alter your hormonal production. If you struggle with period symptoms, you need to know what is in your environment. Some of the most common EDCs that you might have heard of are things like phthalates and pesticides, BPAs. There's also BPFs and other bisphenols. So just because something says it's BPA free doesn't mean that it is bisphenol free. So keep that in mind. Then we've got PFAS or PFAS, those forever chemicals. We've got flame retardants, dioxins. These are things all over our environment right now. They're in the furniture that you're sitting on. They are in the clothes that you're wearing. They are in the air that you are breathing. They are in the products that you're putting on your skin. They are everywhere. And how are these affecting your hormones? When it's absorbed in the body, an EDC can decrease, increase, or completely alter your body's natural hormonal production. And in particular of these EDCs, we have what's called xenoestrogens. And this is the one that I focus on the most when I talk about period health, because this is what's going to be impacting you and those of you who are having really heavy bleeding or spotting before your periods or trouble getting pregnant or again, signs of estrogen dominance. And the way that xenoestrogens work is they bind specifically to our estrogen receptors. So Normally, our brain is telling our ovaries, hey, we need to make more estrogen, and then our ovaries are making estrogen. And then when our estrogen levels reach a certain threshold in our blood, it triggers to our brain, hey, we have enough estrogen. Then our brain talks to our ovaries and says, hey, ovaries, we don't need any more estrogen. And we have this nice feedback loop that goes on. What happens when we have xenoestrogens, too much of these xenoestrogens is these compounds will bind to our estrogen receptors. And they are much stronger. They elicit a much stronger response than our estrogen, our natural estrogen does. And when I say a much stronger response. I mean that they are going to stimulate your uterus. They are going to stimulate that uterine lining. They are going to worsen endometriosis. They are going to have all of the negative effects of your natural estrogen with none of the benefit because it's not your natural estrogen. So you don't get any of the benefits like important for your hair health, your skin health, your heart health, your bone health, your moods, all of the things that estrogen helps with. We don't get that when we have xenoestrogens, but we get all the negative effects of it's stimulating our tissues and stimulating our breasts and stimulating all of the things to help proliferate and grow those tissues. So then we see things like fibroids, we see things like cysts, we see things like heavy bleeding, we see endometriosis worsening. So that's why it's really important to know, and we're gonna talk about this in a minute, what these compounds are in and how we can reduce them. So now that we talked about the feedback, when we have really high xenoestrogen levels, what happens is we get that feedback to our brain saying, oh, estrogen levels are really really high. So then your brain is like, oh, our estrogen is really high. It tells your ovaries not to make as much estrogen. So now you're not making as much of your natural estrogen and you have this surplus of these xenoestrogens. So you may have symptoms of high estrogen, even though when we check your blood, your estradiol levels are low. And that is because, again, with that feedback loop, it is telling your brain that estrogen levels are high and your brain is telling your ovaries to not make as much estrogen. So now you have symptoms of vaginal dryness, you have symptoms of irritability, and mood swings, and you have symptoms of heavy bleeding, period pain, PMS symptoms, because you have high levels of xenoestrogens and low levels of your natural estrogen. Okay, so let's talk about where some of these sources of these EDCs come from. So we are trying to eliminate things as much as possible. I don't want you to have to live in a bubble. I don't want you to be afraid of the world, okay? Keep that in mind. None of this is to scare you. It's to inform you and educate you so that the things in your home that you do have control over, you can control. There's food, which contains pesticides. Even the organic stuff still has pesticides, so please make sure that you are washing even your organic produce. And then we have our cleaning products, what we're using in our home every day. We've got our kitchen items, what we're cooking with, what we're storing our food in, how we're heating up our food. We've got our bath and beauty products, the things that we put on our body every single day, the things that are getting soaked in, things that are going through your liver, right? Your liver is processing everything that you're eating, drinking, breathing, putting on your skin. 
So all of this is going through our liver. Then we also have plastics. See the research for microplastics. It is insane how much microplastics are in our bodies and how much plastic is just in our environment in all kinds of things. Things like tea bags contain microplastics. Your cutting board, every time you cut on that, you are chopping up plastic, putting it into your food. Every time you are storing food and heating it up in a plastic container, you are getting plastic into your bodies. And lastly, we have fragrances. Fragrances like candles, anything scented, lotions that are scented, beauty products that are scented, trash bags that are scented, anything that has scent, anything that has fragrance, we want to avoid. These are the biggest xenoestrogens that I see. I've worked with women where the only thing we cut out was fragrance. That's it. We cut out candles, we cut out perfumes, we cut out scented products, and their period started improving. They didn't have the period flu before their period anymore. They didn't have that congestion. They didn't feel like they were getting sick all the time. They didn't feel super tired. And that's all we did was work on getting rid of fragrances in their environment and increasing water so that their liver could clean everything out. Just focusing on those two things makes such a big difference. So that will tell you already how much of a role xenoestrogens play in your period health. Okay, so let's talk about cleaner swaps for cleaning products. I have two favorite things. The first one is Branch Basics, and I absolutely love this. I have no really affiliation with them at all. I love this, and this is what I use in my home. I love Branch Basics because once you buy the starter kit, you have everything that you need, okay? So this starter kit will include stuff for laundry detergent, hand soap, window cleaner, bathroom cleaner, and an all-purpose cleaner, all from one concentrate, okay? So that concentrate you only have to buy depending on how much you use all these things, but we go through it every, I don't know, like four to five months, we buy a new concentrate. So it lasts a really long time. Then if you're like, well, I want it to be completely antimicrobial, then you can use what I absolutely love. It's called Force of Nature. And again, none of this is sponsored. These are just truly things that I love using. Force of Nature uses ionization. I'm going to say look at their website and don't quote me on this, but you will use vinegar and distilled water and it goes through this process and turns that substance into a antimicrobial product. So we actually use this in our clinic to help with any viruses, bacteria, anything like that. So if you're like, I don't want to clean my toilet with a concentrate from Branch Basics, that's fine. You can use Force of Nature. If you really want to make sure it's like as clean as bleach, but without using bleach, I would say use this. All right, let's talk about cleaner swaps in the kitchen. The biggest thing, if you do nothing else, I want you to get rid of all of your nonstick Teflon stuff. If it has that black coating where you can scratch it up, it's a hard no, okay? The green pan is an alternative that might be a better nonstick pan, but I really want you guys to focus on using cast iron and stainless steel. Those are gonna be the things that last through generations. Pass it down to your kids. <laughs> Get it from your grandparents. I'm sure they have some really great cast iron or stainless steel stuff from back in the day. And it lasts and it's amazing. Learn how to use it. You can look up YouTube videos, look up you know any kind of social media videos where people are teaching you how to effectively cook with cast iron and stainless steel because once you know how to cook with it, it's not gonna be as overwhelming and daunting, okay? I know a lot of people are like, there's no way everything sticks to my pan when I cook like that. It's because you're not doing it right. So make sure you are absolutely eliminating your non-stick items. These have the highest level of EDCs in them and we know in particular Teflon has been linked to so many different cancers. Please get rid of those. Then we've got aluminum foil. We know aluminum is not great for us. I know a lot of people have already changed their deodorant. We'll talk about that in a minute. And instead of using foil when you're baking, use parchment paper, unbleached parchment paper. So like the brown one, that's what I want you to use when you're baking or throwing things in the oven, in your air fryer even. Wherever you're using foil for heating, throw parchment paper in. It keeps everything from sticking and you're not worried about all the aluminum that you are eating. And if you are using a silicone baking mat, I want you to avoid those as well. Silicone is only meant to be used for cooling. So anything that you are storing in the fridge or freezer, silicone is great. If you are heating with silicone, we want to avoid that because we do see research showing that it is getting leached into our food. So storage, silicone, cooking, no silicone. Okay, and lastly, on the topic of storage, plastic, okay? Or you are leaching plastic into your food when you are storing food in plastic containers, and especially if you are heating them up in plastic containers. That's a hard no for me. I really want you guys to get glass Tupperware as much as possible.
possible. Stainless steel is also great. Obviously you can't heat in stainless steel. You can heat in glass or store it in something else and heat it in glass when you, you know, get to work or however you're heating stuff. All right, so here are some cleaner swaps for bath and beauty products. This is a really big one. This is where a lot of our EDCs are because of the fragrances, because of the phthalates, because of the sulfates, all of that stuff. First swap I really, really, really encourage you to make is your deodorants, your antiperspirants in particular. We want to be sweating. I, I need you to be sweating. We have a lot of lymph nodes in your axilla. And if you are blocking those from detoxing, from eliminating what your liver has already metabolized, sweat, urine, and poop are the three biggest ways that we eliminate things in our body, right? And so if you are blocking one of those things, you're going to start having issues. And I know you're like, I just don't want to be a stinky girl. I get it. There are other things that we can do for that that won't prevent you from sweating. But if you're like, I don't want to have BO, this is what we're going to do. So one of my favorite things is these salt crystals. They work so well for killing off the bacteria in your armpits so that you don't have odor. I get so many messages from people being like, this worked so well for me. I don't smell anymore. Even through Phoenix summer, I am not smelling. I don't have BO. You will have to reply, reapply a few times. I'm going to say that it's not like an antiperspirant because it's not stopping you from sweating, but it is something that um, you just run underwater, rub under your armpits for like 30 seconds. You might have to do that two or three times a day, but it's just a stick of salt. So all it's doing is killing off that bacteria to help that odor. And then if you're like, I still, you know, would like to have some kind of something to help with the smell. The EO deodorant sprays and wipes are my favorite things. They are essentially just essential oils and alcohol and a little bit of water. So what that is going to do is again, the alcohol alcohol is going to help kill off any of the bacteria in your armpits and the essential oils help with the smell without disrupting all of your hormones without worrying about not sweating. So and this you can reapply as much as you'd like. I find that using both in combination together using the salt and then doing the spray or the wipes makes the biggest difference. Then we've got our period products. This is also going to be very important. Our vaginal tissue is very absorptive and it is going to suck up anything that is in there, right? So the tampons that you're using, the pads that you're using are going to to be very important. I will say silicone, medical grade silicone is what those reusable discs and cups are typically made with. That is a great option if you're like, I don't know what to switch to. Switch to one of those reusable cups or discs. The two that I know are very clean are going to be Rael and Cora. So those are the two as far as tampons and pads that I would stick to. And again, start trying out a menstrual cup, start trying out a menstrual disc, see how convenient it is and see how easy it is to use once you get the hang of it. I will say there is a little bit of a learning curve, but I find that most of the women that I work with who switch to those really, really love them once they can figure out how to use them. All right. And lastly, I need you to be using an air filter in your home. I don't care if you have a new build and you've checked for molds. I don't care unless even if you live out in the country, there's still something in our air, okay? And so if you live in the city or if you live in the suburbs, if you live off a busy road, if you have furniture, like everything is off-gassing all the time everywhere. If you have clothes in your home, like we need an air filter. I will tell you, I recently purchased one a few months ago and my whole family and I were getting sick almost every month. Like we were just in the thick of it and I had to work on my immune system and that was something that I was I was doing. And my three-year-old daughter stopped getting sick as often. She was getting sick almost every month, every other month. It would just be like a little stuffy nose, a little cold here and there. Once we got these air filters, we got the air doctors. They often have sales, so go check their site. But once we got these, we got one in her room, in our room, and then in our main area. And we stopped getting sick as often. We did live off of a busy road, so that was a huge factor for us. And we also live in the valley, so our air quality isn't great. So getting the air filter made the biggest difference in our home. And we noticed it in our daughter when she was in getting sick every single month. We got it six months ago. She's been sick once in that time where she was getting sick every single month. And I was like, you're not staying home from school. I need you to go to school. Stop being sick. And hey, the air filters helped. So Air Doctor, Austin Air, and Jasper, those are my three go-tos that you can look into. You can compare these with, you know, other ones if you see them, but these are the top three that I would recommend. So I really don't want any of this to scare you, to overwhelm you. As you start emptying out each of your products, slowly start replacing them with these new things, okay? You don't have to go throw away your entire pantry, throw away all your Tupperware, throw away all your pots and pans, get rid of all your Bath & Beauty products today. I want you to slowly start incorporating these things into your home and slowly start cleaning up your home environment. Because if you struggle with period issues and your home is full of all of these EDCs, you are gonna continue 
continue to struggle. Your body is always going to have that increased load. Obviously, our environment in our world still has all these things and we can only do what we can do. Like when you're out and about and you you know need to drink water from a plastic water bottle, drink the water. Don't be afraid. And when you're at home on a daily basis, clean up your environment as much as you can. And if you need more support with personalizing your hormonal health plan, you can schedule a visit and we can chat a little bit more about how we would work together on getting you the periods that you need.